Good morning, and thank you guys so much again for joining uh, Greater Nevada on this recorded presentation. We are finding a growing need for financial education from our community members, and that is why each month we showcase a different financial topic that we hope will help you in your financial well being. After this webinar, you can expect to receive some information, including some free re resources and materials to help you on this financial wellness journey. You can also re-watch this webinar or others on our GNCU YouTube channel. Just a few housekeeping items during the presentation. We're going to have a few question and answer breaks, but for now, just go ahead and place your cameras in the off status and your mics in the mute status. But once we get to these Q&A sections, you are more than welcome to turn those on. You can also type your questions through the chat feature, um, or if you want a more anonymous alternative, please feel free. You can email us at gncufinancialacceleration at gncu.net. Um, joining me today and to help me with my question section is my beautiful out community out Reach, excuse me, we just changed her title, Community Impact Manager with Greater Nevada Credit Union, Michelle Hale. So if you see her pop on, she is going to kind of uh, help me guide your questions um, in those question and answer breaks. All right, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Saray Helms. I'm the Financial Education Specialist here for Greater Nevada Credit Union, and I'm happy to be your presenter today for Emergency Savings. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. I am a local Nevadan and a Reno local it reno it i believe they call us um i do love spending my time outdoors if i'm not outdoors i'm usually at home with my cat and my senior dog and i will just apologize if you see them pop in because i do work from home I started my career with Greater Nevada in 2015. I was studying to be an educator. I'm now a proud financial educator and coach for our community. My passion is to motivate and educate and empower our community through personal finance. Now we can go ahead and dive into emergency savings. All right, this on your screen, I again, thank you for learning with me, but I also learn with you. If you could just take your phone out, you use your camera application on your phone to aim your camera at that and uh, take a picture and that QR code should take you to this link. Uh, as I said, this survey, we take information from that of what you want to learn more of, and we base those webinars specifically on this. So we had a huge request for emergency savings last year, um, and we've never had this topic before. And specifically because it was requested by the community so much, um, we are here today. So thank you again for everyone giving us your feedback. There'll be another opportunity at the end here to scan that survey code and i believe michelle may have helped me and put it in the chat there all right so emergency savings a little a couple topics that we're going to learn um why we place savings low on the priority list a lot of people feel as though they don't have enough to save okay and i hear that a lot we're going to go through some common spending cycles we find ourselves in and i think um that is a direct tie uh i call this i'm going to call this throughout this presentation the savings triad it's a triangle um but this is really our long-term and short-term goals to help us with prioritizing we're going to learn three steps to creating a, a savings plan right you should really have a plan going into this of how much is approachable for you to save and then we're gonna kind of match some needs why would we would need to save to maybe some products that are out there um, and what is the best for your specific goal and these are general products not just greater nevada specific um, some may be but your financial institution may have something very similar Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So the reason we're here today is I hear a lot about this statistic um, on the screen here. 49% of Americans do not have enough money to cover a $400 emergency expense. And this can be kind of said in multiple ways. Um, I've seen it with a $500 emergency expense, a $1,000 emergency expense, um, and I kind of want to break that down of where that comes from, okay? 
So when we're saying that, a survey was taken, this was a phone survey by Bankrate a few years back of, if you had a $400 expense, where would you pull that money from? Um, and that 49% voted not savings. And by not savings, they said they would put it on credit, they would cut expenses, here we are, they would borrow or they would get a loan. So 47% said they would, about half of them said they would. But I wanna show you that this is coming from about half of the people saying they wouldn't. Um, and that brings you know, a focus to us of we're really trying to work on our savings. So just a reminder that you're not alone. We were kind of talking before the webinar started that I never wanna dismiss that things feel more expensive today and therefore saving feels and probably is harder. Um, and I'm here with you to say that. So 72% of Americans report they live feeling paycheck to paycheck. 85% report that they feel some stress about finance. And then 30% said they're always stressing about finance. Okay. And then we just reached the highest mark of debt in America. So just some things to think about. Again, goals that we're all working on our savings, right? I did want to talk about some spending cycles because I think this really will help you um, in your journey of saving. Um, I think it's really down to not only our patterns and our habits, um, but our internal behaviors. And we'll talk about that a lot. Okay, so let's find some common spending cycles that we find ourselves in that I think affect our savings habits. So I'm going to start here in this top left corner. Okay, so we find sometimes ourselves in this earn, spend, earn, spend, earn, spend, right? So we call this the paycheck to paycheck. We're just looking for the next one. There's really not a lot of savings in this, right? Because we're feeling as though it's just enough to cover my bills, Okay, and I really want us to think about a different behavior and changing those habits. Okay, let's move over to the right on the top. So maybe we are earning, we're spending, we spend too much and we're borrowing and then we're spending again. This borrow could be a loan. This could be from a friend or family member. This could also be pulling from your savings account. Okay. Let's go ahead and shoot down to this bottom left corner. Earn, spend, save. Oh, we have savings on the board. This feels a lot better, but this is putting saving last. So it's very low on the priority list. I definitely understand that we want to pay our bills first and then we're saving. Um, but where we really want to be is in this bottom left corner. Earn saving first and then spending. This is the pay yourself first attitude. I may refer to this later on in the presentation. And this puts savings high on the priority list. Now, I want to pause here of going to change your behavior. I'm not dismissing if you feel as though we're in this paycheck to paycheck cycle and you don't have enough to spend or save, excuse me. If you're practicing this pay yourself first attitude, how I recommend doing that is we work hard for our money, okay? And we work really hard for that paycheck that the first thing that I'm doing is I'm putting towards a goal of mine. I have personally, I'll use myself as an example, I love to travel. So I have a travel savings and you bet every paycheck I am putting into that travel savings because I worked so hard this last paycheck that I deserve to get a little closer to my vacation goal. So I want you to start thinking like that. You do deserve um, to start planning for those goals. If you never save, how are you ever treating yourself? How are we ever going to get out of that cycle? So just a reminder, try to be in this earn, save first, then spend, okay? And we're going to talk about um, making a spending plan to make sure we have enough. 
OK, a couple myths that I want to go over. I hear this a lot. Um, these type of sentences all across generations. OK, so I'm going to start in this myth here. I will save when I pay off all my debt. I understand a very good point. We're going to talk about that. Essentially, you should have debt paid off before you start savings. So say the books. But is that realistic? Really, the downfall of this is if you don't have a savings account for future expenses, you're probably going to put it on a credit card anyway. So we got to stop that cycle. OK, next one. I don't see a benefit to saving because the rates are too low for me. Again, you can really utilize the savings account benefits of just having, we'll talk about multiple piggy banks, to not put things on credit, to have savings accounts kind of all over. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about different methods that work for you. I am young. I will save for retirement later. Okay, but because of compounding interest we should be taking advantage now the more that you're putting in now and over the amount of time it will grow i always like to tell people who may not be taking advantage of their mat uh excuse me their match if their employer offers one you could be losing money what if does that motivate you <laughs> okay next one i'm planning to continue to work past my retirement age I hear this from every generation across the board. Um, I understand, but that is assuming that we're going to have healthy and capable bodies. Um, we should be planning for, you know, maybe increased medical expenses at that point. Our bills are going to be different than they are now. And just really thinking about your future plan. Okay. I will save whatever is left after. I pay my bills. We just learned that puts savings low on the priority list. We should pay ourselves first. Okay, I am going to pause here. This is what our question and answer breaks look like. I very much appreciate there's a lot of action going in on the chat, which I love. Michelle, are there any questions? Uh, so on my email that I got, it says, do I have to do my budget to start saving? Mmm, great question. I did mention that we were going to need to have a spending plan. When we start savings, I think it's 100% essential to have a savings plan to know how much can I save. Um, let's be realistic. How much can I allocate to savings and how much can I allocate to debt repayment if you have multiple goals at the same time? Um, if you don't have a number in mind monthly of what you're putting to each of those, you may find yourself less successful or harder to keep track of. So I would say yes, I absolutely recommend doing a savings plan um, before you do your spending plan. That's actually going to be one of our steps and we'll take a look. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we move on? We're going to get to that in just a second, actually. And yeah, as you were uh, just talking, um, another person had asked, how much is a good goal to start with? <gasps> Ooh, great question. We're going to get into that a little bit further. Um, and I hope to break these down to short term and long term savings goals. Absolutely. When I started saving, I felt overwhelmed of where do I save first? How much do I save? What is even normal? How is good? What's a good goal? Um, my best advice that I'll say now is all of this is individualized. But again, I hope to break this down and go through some examples of short term and long term goals and maybe how much for you individually is going to be good. That'll be up to you to determine, but I, I hope to give you some tips on how. All righty. Any other questions before we continue? Um, no, we're good to okay. go. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys. These are great questions. Okay, so why save? Okay, we talked about some benefits. The biggest one, I think, 
that 30% of people always stressing about their finances really hit me. I think by planning for the future, we're going to have less stress, less stress if something happens. Um, I'll use myself as an example. I I said I love the outdoors. I love off-roading um, and I have an off-road vehicle and I was a little too rough on it and I had some major, major expenses. I also had a vacation planned later on in the year. Um, I safely was able to pay for the thousands of dollars in vehicle expenses and still go on my vacation. This was a huge personal successful moment for me of going, wow, I really decreased my stress by planning in advance for vehicle repairs and planning in advance for my vacation. Okay. And we'll talk about that. Um, I love talking about savings as an empowerment tool. Like I said, we work very, very hard for our money. Um, I always say life is too short. Now, that doesn't mean oh, impulse shopping. Um, that means planning for yourself. Um, and we deserve to do that. That can be really empowering if you reach your savings goal finally, okay, and have that little bit of less stress. I always talk about, but how? How do I do this? When do I start? I already feel like I don't have enough to save, okay? I'm hitting you at a very crucial time. We are talking about this in February. Perhaps you're getting a tax refund. Have you gotten a bonus or a raise, okay? Anytime you get a raise or a bonus, great time to look at saving, okay? Anytime your spending plan changes, that means if your expenses are going up, um, maybe you've gotten more money, this is a time to relook at how much you're putting, right, allocating towards all of your savings goals and how much if you have a debt repayment plan as well. Um, like I said earlier, typically we say that you shouldn't have any debt payments when you start savings, but I'm a big advocate that you can work on multiple goals at once. It is approachable. Um, you just have to have a spending plan to know how much you're allocating to both. Okay. Um, when you, I recommend starting savings when your regular expenses are covered, right? Get that spending plan and know how much your cash flow is in and out. We're going to talk about that to know why am if you are having to pull from savings or you're you know you're doing that borrowing pattern why and really diving down to the bottom of that um and just start now and make it easy auto save the only reason i think that i was able to save for those vehicle repairs is because i had them automatically transfer without thinking of it and over time um you know i don't plan for a large vehicle expense very often but over time it added up to enough to where i could pay for a large vehicle expense so start small it's totally okay to start small. Again, that compounding interest we can really use. Okay, so talking about where do I start? What is a normal amount to save? Okay, so this I call, I'm gonna call the triad, the savings triad. It's these three steps that we talk about for long-term and short-term savings. So imagine mm, you're climbing up a mountain. Often savings does feel like we're climbing up a mountain and I am not dismissing that. I am not here to say that is easy. It is a practice and it is hard work and so I think it's important to reward yourself um, throughout this process. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean going out and impulse buying, um, but rewarding your process of getting closer to your goals. Okay, so let's talk about this. So we're starting at the bottom of the mountain here, this periodic savings. Think of periodic savings as a buffer or cushion ex savings account for your everyday expenses that come up. This is to prevent you from putting everyday expenses on a credit card. So whatever that means to you, this, again, each person's individual. Maybe this means I know that every spring my child is in sports and I know I have that large fee coming up, so I have a savings account for that type of activity. Um, I know that I have annual dues for my gym paid, um, those type of things. Uh, registration could be a great, right? Vehicle registration. 
of those are regular things that come up that may be a large expense car tires i'm just listing examples okay so an example I would say I encourage you to break these down because I think as you go from tier to tier, you may find that there are different goals. And we'll talk about even creating different accounts for different goals. OK, so think of this as your cushion for everyday expenses, a periodic savings. OK, let's hike up once you're feeling good on your periodic savings. Again, that is up to you to determine. Um, each individual is different. It's hard for me to put a number on how much is good for your periodic savings, okay? Your safety net savings. This is your emergency account. This is your nest egg. This is your overdraft account, okay? This typically we'll talk about is, you know, if you had an emergency and you lost your job, let's say worst case, how can you pay for your rent? Can you pay for your food? Are you able to pay for your regular expenses? This could also, like I said, be an overdraft account. So we'll talk about how much is normal for that. So once you're feeling good there, then we can start planning for some long-term needs, which may include, you know, investments. Uh, I do have retirement in this account. But I do want to say that you should be starting, you know, if you're not restarting a retirement now, you need to start that first. <laughs> and we'll talk about that. But just to give you a visual of prioritizing, you know, think of this periodic savings account. Do you have an emergency safety net if something were to happen? And then can we start planning for long term needs? OK, so three kind of goals for you. All right. So like I said, everyone's situation is individual. You guys are going to be different um, and these may vary, but what's normal? Let's talk about it. OK, so like I said, that periodic savings is for your everyday kind of wants and needs to make sure you don't have to take out of your regular account or you're not putting it on credit. Travel, myself as travel could be included. This would be a periodic savings. I like to travel periodically, therefore I need to plan for it. Okay, next up, your safety net emergencies. Remember that statistic in the very beginning of this presentation, that four or $500,000 um, mark. Uh, if you're not there, that's a great place to start. Work yourself up to that $400, you know, safety net, that $500, that $1,000. Overall, I would say typically the traditional recommended amount is we want you to have three to six months worth of your monthly expenses in this safety net. Um, I think a big I guess reminder of this was COVID. We had a lot of people burn through their emergency savings quicker than they thought or need more than they thought. So this is a reminder of really recommending to have three to six months of personal bills and expenses. OK, so long term, like I said, this is where we're going to find retirement or investments, including mutual funds. So these are items that I really recommend you speak with your financial advisor about um, because they're going to be so individualized. I am also not certified in um, investments and mutual funds. OK, so that is another step and we'll talk about getting there. Um, I do want to pause. Like I said, if you are not planning for retirement right now, that should be your first step um, because of that compounding interest. Starting now is going to give you, you know, more money later on is the idea of that. Um, if I have employer match on here, that is a reminder. If I just like to give the reminder, ask your employer if there is an employer match. And what that means is if their match is 3%, what that means is if you put in 3%, they're also going to put in 3%. Therefore, you're putting in a total of 6%. Okay, so don't miss out on that free money. Um, I do want to pause and say, I think I always get this question of how much is, is enough for retirement. Again, I can't speak to that to your individual amounts. Um, please speak with a financial advisor. We have financial advisors and a financial services team here at Greater Nevada um, that is more than happy to go over that with you. But I just found some information that was very helpful. 
of here and I can put this potentially in the chat of age 30. This really surprised me. If you're around the age 30, you should be saving around 10 to 15 percent. And this is, excuse me, um, per the standard retirement. OK, so your retirement account uh, may be different. Again, don't quote this, but I thought just generally this was a good idea. Um, generalization. So ages 30, that that generation, 10 to 15 percent you should be saving. So before your paycheck comes out, you should be putting 10 to 15 percent into your retirement. OK, age 45, 15 to 20 percent about. OK, again, these could change and this is absolutely up to your individual um, cases. You know, you could have an individual individual case that is more um, age 60 around 20% of that should be going. Okay, so again, don't quote that. Please meet with a financial advisor to really find out where you should be. But I thought that was a great idea. You know, I think a lot of people put in that just that match amount. Maybe your match is 3% and you're only putting in 3%. But where should you really be? Again, um, we will give you information at the end of this to where you can meet with one of our financial advisors to find out that information, okay? All right, go ahead. I'm going to pause there. Any questions so far? That was a bit of information. We went over our triad. We have went over spending cycles. Um, we're going to talk about now how to create a savings plan, um, how to create, we're going to call it SMART goals. Uh, this is utilized kind of all over, but breaking down what is a SMART goal. And then we're going to compare some long term and short term needs with savings accounts. But any questions? I don't have anything on my end. OK, awesome. Thank you. And again, please feel free um, type them in chat. And during these question breaks, we'll try to get to those. Alrighty. so how do you actually create a savings plan? Like I said in the beginning, Start with creating a spending plan. You have to review your cash flow. How much is coming in? How much is coming out? Are you positive or negative? Um, you should be starting there, okay? And how determine how much are you going to allocate towards savings? And if you have different savings goals, how much towards each goal? And what is a priority? Okay, something to think about. Then we're going to move on to step two, which is setting goals. Okay, let's take a look. What is an approachable goal? Is it an achievable? Um, I encourage you break that down to an amount per month. Okay, how much? And then monitor it and adjust as needed. Again, cl think of climbing up that mountain. Uh, it's a long climb and rewarding yourself, really taking a step and looking back and going, oh, man, that, you know, maybe that month wasn't good. Maybe I had to pull from my savings account, but recognize your good behaviors. You still put into your savings account consistently the last three months. You didn't pull from your savings account from the last three, you know, three months. Just look for those good patterns as well because you should recognize those and continue those good patterns. Okay, so next I want to give you steps of how do I actually step into action? What are some good tools and resources that can help me move this forward? Okay, so I'm going to assume that you all are going to create a spending plan. Um, there is a great webinar on this. The recording is up on our YouTube of a little bit more detailed step by step. OK, so I'm going to skip to step two of setting goals and we're going to talk about setting some smart goals and prioritizing. I think that's where I personally struggled was, where do I start? All of it sounds important, okay? So let's prioritize. Here I have our triad of our periodic, our safety net, and our long-term needs. I have different piggy banks here because I think it really helped me to not have all of my goals in the same piggy bank per se. Um, my some of my students, I have the honor of teaching um, financial education to youth, and they always shake their head when I tell them, yeah, I have like almost 10 savings accounts. Um, it was a practice to get better, but this really helped me determine how 
what my progress was on each goal. Like I said, that one year that I had extreme uh, vehicle repairs, but I still was able to go on vacation. I didn't have to break that piggy bank and pay for my car repairs and go, oh my goodness, how much do I have for my Disneyland vacation? Um, I It was clear to me and I already knew I didn't have to break all of my piggy banks, so to say. So um, also think about breaking them up into wants versus needs. That really helps me. I have a different savings account periodic for periodic expenses for my wants. Okay. I have a different periodic savings account for my needs, maybe multiple. Okay, safety net. This is my overdraft protection, um, which I have one for that. My emergency expenses, I have one for that, right? That three to six months of expenses. Then do you think about your health? Do you have a savings for that? Do you think about maintenance and repair. Um, I have an example where a lot of people always finance their new tires. Why not create a savings account and maybe save some money um, and not have to pay that interest, right? Put that in there. Registration, again, an example. Um, and home repairs. Okay, so if you have a vehicle repair come up and a home repair, do you find it beneficial to have those separated or just into one account? You think about that. And again, make this individualized and in what works for you. Okay, so maybe long-term wants. I really want a college fund for my child. I really want a long-term savings for my child, right? Um, I want to invest. Okay, a need is retirement. And I really stress for you and your spouse um, if there are uh, combined income. If you're looking at combined income, don't forget, are you saving enough um, for your spouse that is staying at home as well? All right, let's go ahead and move on to, all right, hopefully we're getting you flowing of what are my needs? What are my wants? Where do I really want to start saving? Now let's get into goal making. Um, these are called SMART goals. You'll see this around a lot. I pulled this right from our website from our partners, Balance which we'll talk a little bit about um, our partner's balance and what they offer later, but amazing tools and resources. So just our triad here on the side to keep us brainstorming, okay? So when you're setting goals, you want them to be smart and we're working downward. You should be specific and calculating, like I said, not only a time frame, um, but an amount. Are you breaking that down per paycheck, per week? Okay, how specific do you want to get? How specific are you needing to get to be successful? Don't be afraid to break it down. Be measurable. Okay, count it. Is it by month, by paycheck, by week? Make yourself successful there. All right. Then be actionable. I think about this a lot where I'll make my goals and I think this is approachable and then I'll go, oh my goodness, I can't do that. That is too much for me. And that's okay. You just made a plan. Um, I have a goal down at the bottom of this example of saving $500 in a year costs $40 per month. Am I at the point where $40 is too much? Maybe I need to break that down to $20 per month and then extend it into two years. This is what I'm talking about being actionable and also realistic. Okay, it's okay to adjust those. Um, always, 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 I express make these time bound, put an end date to it. It is okay if you don't make it to that end goal, but there are absolute moments that we should be looking back going, how. How are we doing? It's okay if we don't do okay, but we're gonna be better next time or we're gonna be better next month. So don't be afraid to not meet that goal, but hold yourself accountable. All right, so an example of putting this into action. Like I said, my goal is to save $500 for an emergency saving and overdraft protection in one year. So I'm breaking this down to one year. That's 12 months. I was able to divide $500 into 12 months. And I found out that that's about $40 per month. Is that enough for me? That's about, if I get paid bi-monthly, that's about $20 per paycheck. 
Is it still approachable? And if so, what can I cut to save that? You know, if I'm feeling a little stressed, maybe you're not adjusting your goals, but you're ad adjusting your everyday finances. And I really want to start my first paycheck of February 2024. Start a start date. Otherwise, we may just keep pushing it out because we feel as though we can't. But by starting, you're going to prove to yourself that you can. OK, and by February 2025, I will have saved this five hundred dollars. OK, so I'm putting an end goal to it. So I hope that helps of how specific I hope you get into your goals. How much are your monthly expenses, you know, for that safety net three to six months? How long will that take you? How much per month? Um, will that take you break it down and really be realistic so we have officially finished step two and we're about to move into step three I do want to pause here and ask are there any questions as we come up to our end um I do have one question but I wanted to say uh, you know I kind of do that same envelope method um I have several uh savings accounts for different things and uh, you just reminded me I need to go in and see where I was and see if I'm, you know, reaching my goals as well. Um, but the question I have here is, should uh, my partner and I have separate savings accounts? Hmm. Should, okay, can you repeat that question? Should my partner and I have separate savings accounts? Was that the question? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um, first, I'm going to say it's what works best for you. I can't determine what works best for you uh, just by this conversation. I can give you some pros and cons. Um, I am in a huge advocate of, I call this or may in the financial world, the yours, the mine, the ours. Um, absolutely okay to have the same savings accounts or sh shared savings accounts, think of that emergency account. If it's for your home, totally makes sense to me for both of you to be on it. But sometimes a partner prefers one person to be in charge of the finances over. Um, but I also think it's important that you're also, the other partner is um, helping provide that goals. Even if it's not financially, it's being on the same motivation of we're going to save together, okay? So just remind if you, whether you choose to have a shared or not, um, just being in it together. And then the benefits of maybe separating them, you have, you probably have different goals. Totally okay. As individuals and individual humans, we have different goals. Maybe I love to travel and my partner hates it. Okay, so I have a travel savings and they may not find that. Um, they may not find, you know, that they want to contribute to my personal savings goal, but they may have their own goal of X, Y, Z. So that's where I think it can be really beneficial to have separate savings goals. So weigh your options. Absolutely. Um, that is a great question. And also funny that you mentioned the envelope system. We're going to get into that in a couple slides. But before we do, um, any other questions before we move on? Uh, I think we're good. OK, awesome. Thank you. Great question. I love that one. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start stepping into action. We've created our savings plan. We know how much we can allocate towards savings. We have our goals and we've broken it down to nearly how much per paycheck we're going to be putting towards potentially each savings goal, right? We're making different ones. Maybe you have a periodic goal, a safety net goal, and a long-term goal. Absolutely recommend that. Like I said, advocate for working on different goals. Um, let's step into action. So how can you physically do this? This was the moment I was left with of going, okay, save, save, sure. Um, but how? <laughs> so again, I'm not telling you that it's easy. It's an active practice. It is something that you're going to have to look back and go, did I do better? Could I do better? Okay, so we mentioned that envelope system. Absolutely. So remember, I like say back in the day, um, but this used to be uh, Dave Ramsey used this method of you would put money into envelopes and this, you know, $20 for gas and $40 for groceries and, you know, obviously just using examples, but to help you budget. And so that's all you had for that. And you knew that that last envelope was, you know, you could put towards, you know, your free spending. 
I should say your first envelope because we're paying ourselves first, right? Um, think of doing the same thing without paper envelopes and paper cash, but electronic. Uh, I, I find that a lot of people don't realize, but you can create multiple savings accounts with your financial institution. So think of having multiple piggy banks. You don't have to smash one piggy bank for all of your different goals and then rescatter and have to go, okay, how much do I have for each goal again? This was my biggest game changer for me was once I was able to practice one or a few savings accounts and make those easy by putting it on automatic payments, I got better at adding more. So again, thinking of those wants and needs, maybe this is your wants piggy, this is your needs piggy for your periodic, maybe this is your safety net, um, right? Retirement account. We don't think many of us have a retirement or a 401k. Um, that's just a different savings account, right? So you may already have that right now and you don't realize it. So just really recommending that you put different goals into different piggy banks. Okay, that's one of my biggest pieces of advice. So now I do, this is kind of an activity for you, rhetorical answers, but I hope you're um, engaging at home. Um, I wanna compare needs savings needs of that savings triad, our little piggies, comparative to what savings account should I put it in? I get a lot of questions about that. Um, what's better for my goal? Um, and I hope this information. The biggest thing, the top four of when you're shopping for a savings account is what the rate is. Okay, shop for the highest rate. Get that compounding interest. Absolutely encourage that. Um, while you're doing that, find out what the fees are and make sure those fees are low enough to compensate for um, the interest rate that you're earning. Okay. You don't want to lose money by getting a high interest and then finding out that you're losing it in fees. Okay. Um, make sure it's convenient or not convenient for you. If you want that store away savings, that's just something to think about is what is the convenience and does it match the convenience of that goal? I hope that makes sense. This kind of goes along with accessibility. Do you want to be able to deposit into it often? How often? Is this automatic? Is this coming out of your paycheck? Do you have to set this up via your online banking platform or with your financial institution? Um, do you want it accessible to take out? as well. Um, can you hide it from your online banking? These are all options to ask your financial institution. Um, we have a lot of tools in our back pocket that specifically can help you, okay, regarding this convenience. So thinking of our triad here, right, boop, 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 we're climbing up. And here are some on the left-hand side, some of our goals. These could be long-term, they could be short-term, they are absolutely not in order, but would you place it in the periodic, the safety net, or the long-term? And what's gonna be good for that? So just some examples, again, to keep your brain flowing of what are some goals for you. Do you have a savings account? You know, a peer, for those periodic expenses. You can also have additional savings accounts. Maybe they're not a fancy account, but they're just the same type of savings. Ask your financial institution if they offer that, and you don't have to open something like a money market or CD. We can get into those um, in just a moment here. So retirement accounts, probably going to be in this long-term needs, right? These include IRAs, 401ks, um, Roth or traditional IRAs, both in that long-term. What are you thinking about? Okay, a money market is just a different type of savings account, typically a high yield, um, as well as a CD. This is a certificate deposit. Um, typically, the more money in there for the longer amount of time, the higher interest rate you are getting. The difference between, I would say you can use these for any, any uh, goal on the triad, okay? But the difference is a CD is locked up. You do not have access to deposit more into it. And there's typically penalties of taking it out 
OK, if you want something more a little bit what we call liquid and accessible, um, the money market may work for you. It may have a little bit lower of a rate because it's not locked up and because you have accessibility to it. Um, but you typically people will lean towards the money market because you can even do a couple transactions off of it a year um, or a month if you needed to, let's say, pay a bill from it. OK, so it's more accessible than a CD, but you may be getting a higher rate with a CD, okay? So investments and mutual funds, right? Probably here at the long term, I think, again, I speak with your financial advisor on these. I am not licensed in investments, but I think it's safe to say that, you know, this is a long-term goal of riding the waves. You're thinking about, you know, typically taking this money out at the end for retirement, um, a little bit of a cushion there. I'm not mentioning, um, you know, those kind of short-term um quick money, I call it, kind of investments. Um, I'm not classifying those in here, okay? HSA, we talked about, do you have a savings for your health? Okay, this really was a game changer for me. I do not stress anytime I have a health expense come up because guess what? I already have a savings account that helps with that. Um, also something to think about, okay? So some goals and whether they're short-term-ish or a long-term, okay? So let's go. I have a question break, but I'm going to start to go into, you know, what are some types of, actually, you know, it doesn't look like I have it on this updated slide, but, um, you know, I do think about this money market, a CD, something like that. Um, that will help you. Again, with the periodic savings, I'm really glad somebody mentioned this and that you found benefit from this. This is a particular product with Greater Nevada, but your financial institution may have something very, very similar. Um, we call this account right now the I Can Save account. And this is a type of savings account that offers a high interest, probably comparatively to a money market or CD or something like that, or even better. Of This is a type of account where we reward you with a high interest by putting uh, consistent deposits into it. This is to help get to write that $500,000, maybe $2,000 goal. And by consistently rewarding you and by depositing into the account each month, you're getting a high interest. This is to help you, motivate you, and reward you for consistent saving. Um, so ask your financial institution if you have something like that. But I wanted to pause before um, because we are getting to the end of um, our presentation. But this, I would say, you know, type of I can save or a consistent savings account, ask your financial institution if they have anything like that to help you on your savings goals. Okay, we are finishing up here, you guys. Um, this is our final question and answer break section. Um, are there any other questions we have about emergency saving? Um, I don't see any at this time. Okay, sounds good. Well, not to worry if you do have things come up, we'll be giving you some not only resources and tools, uh, but you'll have some contact information. So uh, with that, just ending you with a couple items. Thank you so much again for being here. I hope this did help you live greater. Um, to provide you with some resources, again, look for that email from me that will come after. We offer free financial counseling here at Greater Nevada, and this is offered in other languages. You do not need a membership with us to receive this financial coaching, and we'll be giving you a link and a phone number to that in that email. Um, absolutely can help you with your spending plan um, as you work on your savings goals, okay? We also offer some free other resources and tools, podcasts, videos, articles. I'd be, I'll be sending you a few, a few items of those. Um, and again, some more information on savings accounts generally from Greater Nevada. Feel free, please. I know your institution has similar products. Some future webinars. Uh, next month, we are talking, uh, talking about credit card debt and fraud. So some topics there to register for. And again, thank you so much. Um, 
to making it to this financial well-being webinar, uh, congratulate yourself and give yourself a pat on the back for taking a step to getting towards your financial well-being. And if you would like to know more, we will be sending out some more information. Uh, if you have a moment, please help me learn with you by scanning that learning survey on your screen. But that is all I have for you today. And thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day.